I am up bright and early this morning because I could not sleep last night. See those hutches back there? There's that empty hutch right there. That hutch, by the end of today, will be filled with brand new quail for our homestead. So I'm really excited and I hope to take you through the whole journey today. That one. So this is a rabbit hutch that Missy was in. Missy was our Flemish giant, and as you might remember, she went to a new home a couple weeks ago. So I have this very large rabbit hutch that our quail will be going into. And I've just been kind of trying to get it ready for our quail. So I've just been cleaning it out from what was left over from her. And you can see it's a pretty deep wide hutch and underneath it's all up off the ground so that we can pull all of that fertilizer out guys you're messing up my video Yeah, you are. You are too. And you. Chatty Kathy, are you excited about you excited about quail Liz? Oh my Bohemoth. AKA Elvis, <laughs> his mane, him and his little wife there. So my plan is to have a little housing area right here that would probably come out to about the first, eh, probably midway between. So halfway right in this area. And so they would have a little housing area there. Then they would have the entire rabbit hutch to run around in. My idea is to put the housing area down here is if they lay eggs, they, they'll roll down to this area because it's on a, a slight incline. So I'll show you what it looks like in just a second. We also have this smaller rabbit hutch and then there's another small one down there. So I think I might connect the two, or I might just keep them for chicks and grow outs. Um, quail grow out to be butchered in five weeks, and so splitting them between the two hutches um, would give me enough room for grow outs. So I think that's actually, I think I just talked myself into that. I think I'm going to leave them be and use them as grow out cages. But you can tell... They're not huge. These haven't been used for months, so they need a good scrubbing. They were old rabbit hutches that we made ourselves. We've made all of these hutches ourselves. And then it just has a wire door frame. So we were pleasantly surprised to find that we not got one but two colors of quail yesterday and they're hopping around in there I'll show you they were not very active last night at all which kind of had me concerned um, they don't have all their feathers yet they're still only about five weeks old so, they'll be getting the rest of their feathers soon. The three white ones are called A, M, N, A and M. And the A and M quail were actually produced 
to be all white meat and to be a little bit bigger than the Coturnix quail. Well, they are Coturnix, but they're just the A&M's kind. So they're used normally strictly for meat because they are a little bigger and they're all white meat. So now that I know that we have the A&M quail and the, um, the Japanese, I think my decision of separating them is actually going to happen. Originally I wasn't going to separate them, but I think that I am going to want to breed the A&M specifically for meat and then the Japanese specifically for eggs. And so I think I'm going to leave the A&M in this big cage because it's a trio. There's two females and one male. And then I'll put the Japanese, which are the brown ones, in with uh, in this little cage right here. And um, use them specifically for eggs. So that means when they start laying, I'll be hatching my own. And this one will be full of the A&M, which are the white ones. And the little one will... I have two little little cages over here. I have this one. And then I have the other one over there, which needs to be fixed. And so this will hold my breeders, and that will hold my grow outs. So. And then you'll see I have this little box right here. This is actually an old nesting box um, that I've turned over. And it's very, very heavy and sturdy. So it, it's really, if they jump on it, there's no way for them to to push it over because they only weigh a few ounces. But anyhow, you can see there's a little hole right there that they can hide under if they ever feel the need to run and hide. So they've really actually been enjoying that. So I seem to be having a dilemma with my little quail. Um, I want you guys to take a look at what I discovered this afternoon and if you own quail, I would love to hear um, how you deal with this. Basically, it's about dust bathing. Um, originally, my plan, which you can see from the video, was to have them in hutches that I already had and it wouldn't require any extra work. But I discovered this afternoon that they really enjoy taking dust baths, which no one ever really told me and I'm not quite sure why I never really thought about it considering they are like little miniature chickens. But... They're in hutches. So you'll see from the video, I put a dirt pan in there with them and they went right to it. They flocked right to the dirt pan. So my question for you quail owners, you'll see. Do you prefer your quail in hutches? If they're in hutches, do you give them a dust bath area? Or do you not give them a dust bath area at all? I'm gonna give them one, just so you know, because obviously they enjoy it. But what is your take on it? Here we go. So, these little babies were looking kind of rough, and I was thinking, you know what? We probably could use a good dust bath. And now that I'm seeing this, I am second guessing my habitat for these quail. I'd be really interested in knowing if you do have quail. Do you offer them a dust bathing area in a hutch style habitat? Or do you find that they do better in an open run, even if it's dirt, if they do better in an open run so that they have a place to dust bathe? Because clearly they want to dust bathe. Now, right now, Clearly we just got these guys yesterday. Um, I'm not even sure if they've ever had a dust bath, <laughs> if we're being honest, but I thought it might help along them getting their new feathers and all of that. And clearly they, I mean, they flocked right to it when I put it in there. So I would be interested to know, if you have quail, I'd love to hear from you what your options are if you do keep them in a hutch style setting, which we have a huge hutch for them. But now I'm kind of rethinking this. If we were to do an alternative option for quail, right now I'm behind my coop 
okay? And you would walk in here and have this whole back paddock area that is part of our run, but I could really, well, keep in mind I'd have to do this myself, those two holes that are right there, I could really come all the way across using that tree and to the other side here to make an actual run for quail and then stick the hutches in there. That seems like a lot of work that I didn't want to do, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. This is a huge run, huge chicken run. Chickens never use all of it. If you're wondering where I am, if you've seen from other videos, there's our rabbit hutches. Which is on this side of the chicken coop. As you can see, they're pretty much done with their bath. Um, I gotta say, those little white ones back there look ten times better than they did when they came to us. <laughs> so I think loosening up those feathers made them feel a little bit better. They're so cute. 